Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special presentation here on Stock Charts TV. My name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations at StockCharts.com, and I am joined by my good friend Tony Zhang today, Chief Strategist at Options Play. We here at Stock Charts are tremendously thrilled about a brand new partnership with Options Play. We are expanding our options coverage on the site with new data, new tools, new features, all designed to help make uh, trading options uh, not just more accessible, but even easier. So we've got some fantastic things coming uh, down the pike very, very soon later this year. But we're kind of kicking things off here with Tony and his team with a unique little mini series to help you learn more about the tools that we've recently released on Stock Charts, but also to help you learn more about how to trade key option strategies, learn more about what options are, how they can benefit you in your trading, in your investing. So I am just uh, so honored to be sitting down here with Tony today. We're going to have some fun talking about the number one options income strategy, uh, trading covered calls, selling covered calls. So uh, Tony, I want to bring you on. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for sitting down. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you so much, Grayson. This is going to be fun. And, you know, I've been a user of stock charts for nearly 17 years now. So really, really excited to see and, and be part of this partnership that we have to, to and bring options and data and options functionality to stock charts members. So today, really excited to walk you through the number one options income strategy. You know, as an option strategist, I always see a lot of traders use options as speculative tools to bet on big moves in one direction or another. But this is many times the most overlooked option strategy that can generate a substantial amount of income for your portfolio. Many times I think a lot of investors think of cover calls as boring. And when you actually look at some of the numbers, you might be surprised at how much income you could be giving up or missing out on in your long-term investment portfolio uh, using this one strategy. So really excited to walk you through the mechanics of the strategy and walking you through examples of the tools that you can now use in stockcharts.com to look for these ideas and, and easily uh, find a cover call opportunities for your portfolio. So before we get started, what we are going to discuss here today is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or a recommendation to buy or sell any of the specific securities that I'll be using as example purposes during today's session. So I want to kick off by talking a little bit about the differences between stocks and options. And I think most of you may already be familiar with this, but for those of you that are brand new to options trading, you know, stocks provide you with ownership of the underlying company or underlying security, whether that's a stock or ETF. And when you own a stock, the goal is capital appreciation, uh, either through the, the, the stock price itself or through dividends. And we're going to take a look at a variety of stocks here today from uh, growth stocks that pay no dividends to very high dividend paying stocks and looking at the income levels that you get from the stock itself and the income levels that you're going to get from the options as well. And again, I think a lot of investors may be surprised at how much income comes from the options piece that outweighs what you might get from an income from the equity piece. Um, but you know, when it comes to options, it, you have to remember that when you're trading in options, you're not trading in an underlying security or a company. What you're trading is in a contract that gives you the right to buy or sell that underlying security. And the contract has a lot different influences on the price of that contract, which is what some of the learning curve that sometimes clients uh, have trouble learning is that influence of what what influences the stock uh, you know the price of an option so we're going to walk through a, a little bit of that here today as well but if you think about the underlying security the stock or etf that you're investing in traditionally you're really looking at things like the underlying revenues of the stock the earnings of the stock and general management of the stock that gives you a sense for what the expected outcome for that uh that the, the future of that stock is going to be and usually we look at technical and fundamental analysis to uh screen for these opportunities and look for uh where you might want to invest in the market when it comes to stocks but when it comes to options, there's a few other factors to consider. It's the underlying stock itself is certainly a main factor that determines the value of an option. But you also have to consider volatility. You have to consider time. You have to consider interest rates. These are things that, um, that as you learn more about options, you need to take into account to look at your options trading 
um, opportunities. So we're going to walk through a couple of examples here today and help lay out when you're trading options, how much income you can generate from this type of strategy. So today we're going to cover a single strategy. And in my 17 years of doing this, this is by far the number one options income strategy, or rather the number one option strategy full stop. Uh, nearly 40% of all options trading across the probably 40 to 50 different strategies you can trade, nearly 40% of all options volume is in this one strategy alone. And that's why I call it the number one options strategy, because it's a strategy that's used by most investors. And especially if you look at the institutional side, nearly 70, 80% of options flow is in this single strategy to generate income for long-term investments. So if you're in a fund and you're, and you're a long short fund and you are taking on long-term positions for an underlying security that you have uh, a view on, the way that they utilize options 70% of the time is not for speculation, but for income to add yield to your existing portfolio using options, which means even if you don't currently trade options, but you have stocks and ETFs in your portfolio, this is a strategy that you can use. And it's the only strategy, the only option strategy that doesn't add additional risk to your portfolio. It only adds income. It does come with some trade-offs for that income, but it doesn't add any additional risk. Every other option strategy you, you can trade will add risk to your portfolio. This one does not. So when you sell a cover call, what you're doing is you're obligating yourself to sell the underlying stock through the terms of the contract. Now, the one thing that you might think about, you know, when you think about selling a cover call is that you have an obligation to sell the stock at a specific price sometime in the future. Now, if you really think about that, there's actually something that you currently do as equity investors that has the exact same obligation of selling the stock at a certain price sometime in the future. And that's a limit order. Meaning if you own a stock and you're trying to sell your stock through a limit order, you are already obligating to yourself to the exact same thing as a cover call. But what you don't get with a limit order is you don't get paid premium and you don't get paid income. So what we're doing here today is showing you how you can effectively sell your stock at a stock price higher than where it is today, where you're saying to yourself, if it reached that price, I'm comfortable taking profits, but you're going to get paid to put in that order. That's going to be what why this is the number one option strategy, because you're placing limit orders to sell your stock. Why not also consider getting, generating some income through that process as well? So what does it take to sell a cover call? There are some requirements. Number one, you need to have at least 100 shares of the stock or ETF that is optionable in order to sell a cover call. That means that if you own 99 shares, 50 shares, one shares of that stock, you cannot sell a cover call in it. You must own a round lot of 100 shares before you can sell a cover call because each option contract corresponds to 100 shares of stock. The second thing you need to do is sell that call option using the stock or ETF as collateral against the premium that you're collecting. Because if you were to just sell a cover a, a call without owning the stock, you need to post margin in order to sell that cover call and you're exposing yourself to unlimited risk. You can cover that risk by owning 100 shares of that underlying stock. And like I said, when you sell that cover call, you create an obligation to sell the stock at a certain price sometime in the future. And you can effectively satisfy that obligation with the stock that you own. So if you are called upon that obligation sometime in the future, you effectively have 100 shares of stock in order to deliver and satisfy that obligation. So that's the basic mechanics of a cover call. So. At this point, a lot of investors will say, great, this makes sense. Uh, you know, How do I go about getting started? So what I have is set up is some key um, starting points in terms of when you should consider selling a cover call, what to look for, and how to manage that trade. And we're going to walk through some examples to, to show you this. But when you think about selling a cover call, generally speaking, you either have a neutral or bullish long-term view in the underlying security. And keep in mind, that's generally speaking why you own a stock. You own a stock because you think it's going to appreciate in value. And perhaps in the short run, you might be feeling that the stock is overextended and it's due for some consolidation. Those are some of the best times 
to sell a covered call. You need to have at least 100 shares. And like, like I said, when you sell that call, you're obligated to sell your stock at the specific strike price that you are selling a covered call. And that brings up the second or more important question is when you look at an options chain, when you look at the full scope of options that you can trade, sometimes it can be very overwhelming because there are literally hundreds of strike prices sometimes for a single expiration date. And there could be upwards of 30, 40, 50 expiration dates. So how do you choose from the thousands of potentially uh, optionable uh, or opt-in contracts that you can sell on a specific trade? And this is really where we've done an incredible amount of backtesting, trying out all of those different expiration dates, all of those different strike prices over nearly 20 years worth of data to understand where should you look when you're thinking about selling cover calls. And this is really where the research is incredibly clear as to what you need to prioritize in terms of selling a cover call. So the first thing that we found is that expiration dates, you wanna go out roughly 45 days from the current date as your starting point when it comes to researching what expiration dates to start with. And this comes down to trying to maximize the time decay while minimizing the risk on the underlying stock. 45 days is a good starting point when you're selling cover calls or actually in a lot of other options selling strategies that applies to as well, but specifically around cover calls. And then the more important one here is the strike price. Depending on the types of option strategies that you're trading, you want to choose strike prices that are specific to your strategy. And when we're looking at cover calls, we actually want to choose a strike price that is relatively far away from the current price of the stock. And we use a term options traders call delta. Delta gives us an approximation for a cover call as to what is the pr probability of the stock being above that strike price at expiration. So if let's say you have a stock that's trading at $100, you have a strike price that's 120 uh, with, a, with a delta of let's say 10 deltas, that means that that stock has roughly a 10% chance of being above that $100, $120 strike price at the expiration date. And we always use a probability-based approach to selecting a strike price because that allows us to be consistent in the income stream that we collect. If we set, we if let's say, and our target here for cover calls is usually around 15 deltas. So 15% or rather 85% of the cover calls that we sell, we expect to keep that income. Only in 15% of the cases do we expect the stock to rally above the strike price. And what we'll be able to do is actually take profits on our underlying stock position. So that's an incredibly important thing. But like I said, we'll go through some examples to show you what I mean in that with that in practice. And just an, a bit of an expert tip. If you are uh, with a little bit more experience trading options, you also can look at implied volatility. And there's a term called implied volatility percentile. When that's greater than 50%, those are the most optimal times to sell cover calls. You can certainly sell cover calls when implied volatility is less than 50%, but you're just going to receive more income when implied volatility is greater than 50%. And lastly, closing out the trade, managing the trade. When you sell us a cover call and you make 75% of the premium that you've collected, it's a good time to consider taking profits and moving on, either selling more cover calls or rolling that cover call to collect more premium. Uh, but ge generally, once you've made about 75% of the potential profits on a cover call, its best practice is not to continue holding on to it and let it expire worthless, but to adjust that strategy and try to collect further income. On the flip side, if you sold the cover call for let's say one dollar, and now that now now that cover call is trading for two dollars, meaning you've lost a hundred percent of the premium that you've collected, you might want to consider just cutting your losses on that cover call and buy back that cover call. So you want to manage it on both sides when it's working in your favor, but also when it's working against you. And the last rule of thumb, really important one, is that if you start to ex um, reach the last two to three weeks from expiration you also don't want to necessarily hold those trades into expiration. You want to manage them before you reach expiration. So I think with that, let's jump into some real examples because from my perspective, 
the best way to learn is to go through real examples and show you stocks that you might actually own in your portfolio and walk through some uh, really uh, walk through a, a showing you finding those opportunities using the tools that are now available to you here at Stock Charts, and more importantly, show you how much income you can actually generate from these types of strategies. So, Grayson, let's walk through first before we look at the options chain, just setting up a chart list where you can quickly view your holdings or the stocks that you own in your portfolio, because that's really going to help facilitate quickly running through a portfolio that you own and finding these opportunities um, uh, relatively quickly. Absolutely. And I, I got to say, Tony, I mean, this is one of my favorite things to show people. It's probably one of the most important things that you can do as a Stock Charts member. If you have a portfolio and you have a Stock Charts account, this is something you should absolutely know about. So we're here on the members dashboard, which I kind of always like to say is, is a bit of the heart and soul of your stock charts account. But Tony, if you hit that uh, that chart lists button, yeah, you can get here by, by hitting that your dashboard link at the top of any page. Once you're on the dashboard, hit that chart list button in the top right corner of this page. And this is going to scroll you down to all of the chart lists that you have in your account. Now, when we say chart list, if you're not totally familiar with that, it's effectively the same as a watch list. In some other platforms, you'll have watch lists. You'll have these kind of lists that you can build up with different symbols in them. Here at Stock Charts, obviously, everything revolves around charts and seeing what's happening with those securities. So we call those chart lists. Now, you can create different numbers of chart lists in your account, uh, depending on the, uh, the service level that you are at. But once you're here on the dashboard and you're looking at this chart list panel, you can actually create a new list right from here. So that's what we're going to do right now. Tony's going to hit that button in the top right corner of that panel, that new button. And that's going to allow us to create a new chart list. So yeah, I think what we're going to do is uh, is call this, you know, my portfolio, my covered call portfolio, uh, give that list a name. And then right from here, you can actually type in the symbols that you own. So you can either separate those with a comma or separate them uh, on each uh, individual line there. Tony's going to type in a couple of symbols that we're going to look at, and that's going to put those into a new chart list in our account. That's going to give us access to some of these tools that we're talking about today. So once you create that list, as you can see in just a moment, this is going to send you over to the edit view. So if you wanted to change anything else about this port, this uh, this portfolio list we've created, uh, move things around, change names, anything like that, you can do this. But then up kind of at the top of this page, you can see that we have our list selected and we can view that in a couple of different ways. Yeah, if you open up that menu, You've got things like our summary view up at the top, which is going to give you kind of a big data table. You can view charts for each of these. But the very exciting new thing that we now have is the options view, uh, which we have developed in uh, in partnership with Tony and his team at Options Play. So if you jump over to that options chain view, you can see for each individual security, the complete options chain. And the nice thing about this, as you're going to see, is that you can actually easily flip through different symbols, again, in that chart list. So when you take that portfolio that you actually own uh, and you start to uh, to use some of these different uh, different views, like the options view, it makes it incredibly easy to see uh, key details about the things that you own. So, Tony, I'll, I'll pass it back over to you now that we got that chart list created. I'm excited to see you put some of these tools to work. Yeah, thank you so much, Grayson. And this is incredibly uh, useful tool in helping you walk through finding cover call opportunities as quickly as possible because the process for going symbol by symbol through uh, your um, portfolio takes some time, right? And this chart list really helps, uh, number one, help you remember which stocks that you own 100 shares of. And that's really kind of what I suggest uh, if you're interested in the strategy to do. Set up a chart list called My Cover Call Portfolio Enter all the symbols that you own at least 100 shares of so that you can quickly go through that list very quickly. And I'll show you just in, in the next few minutes how I can go through the four stocks that I've added to my portfolio, three stocks and one ETF, and how quickly I can find opportunities to sell cover calls, look at roughly how much yield that I can collect on these, and see um, you know whether or not this is a trade that I want to make. So I used a few symbols that I think are pretty household names that are very common that you might own in your in your own portfolio. And I purposely selected some stocks that are 
pay, that pay no uh, dividends, such as Walt Disney. I looked at some stocks that pay a very high dividend, like uh, Verizon, um, and also some ETFs like Qs, just because these are some of the most commonly held names, and walk you through kind of how they look, right? So let's look at Disney. Disney is an incredibly popular stock that many of you hold as kind of a growth stock. Uh, it doesn't pay any dividends, unfortunately. So if you own this stock, you only have capital appreciation to potentially look for in terms of potential profits. So let's take a look at how much income can we generate on the Disney stock that we hold while we own it and hope that this appreciates in value, how much income that we can collect. So if you remember what I said before, when you're looking at cover calls, starting point in terms of expiration dates is roughly 45 days to expiration. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the expiration date drop down. We're going to look at if there are any expirations that are close to 45 days. And as you can see, next to each uh, option's expiration, there is a number in parentheses that tells you the number of, of days to expiration. And that was built specifically to help you quickly see uh, which expiration you want to choose. So I'm going to look at the September 1st expiration, which is exactly 45 five days to expiration. And then what I'm going to focus on here is this column called Delta, because I was referring to you before. Delta tells us the approximate probability that the stock is going to be above that strike price at expiration. And we said that our target here for Delta was roughly 15 deltas. And if you look at that, that happens to be around the 97 dollar strike price. So let's just review what that means. The 97 that's telling us that the $97 strike price on Disney has about a 15% chance that on September 1st, the expiration date, the stock will be above that price at expiration. The other way you can translate that is that 85% of chance that the stock will be below that stock price at expiration. So that means that if I sold the September 1st, $90.97 strike price when Disney is currently trading at around $86, that gives me roughly $11 worth of upside between now and the expiration date. So $11 on 86 bucks, let's just do a little bit of mental math here real quick. $11 on 86 bucks requires the stock to rally nearly 13% in the next 45 days before your stock is called away. Now, from my perspective, if I own Disney and the stock rallied 13% in 45 days, that's a pretty good result from the underlying stock that I'm holding, right? And that's the other thing to remember is that you own the stock because you want capital appreciation. So we're also selecting stock uh, strike prices that give you plenty of stock appreciation before the stock is called away. But in the 85% time, 85 chance that the stock does not rally up to the $97 uh, strike price, here, as you can see, the bid column gives us an understanding, or rather the mid column uh, gives us an understanding of roughly how much income we're going to collect in the next 45 days. And it's telling us in this particular case, I'm going to earn about 83 cents. Remember, this is an $86 stock. So 83 cents on an $86 stock is just shy of 1%. And you might say 1% doesn't sound very interesting, but that's 1% in 45 days. Remember, this is a stock that currently pays you zero dividends. You are now earning 1% in roughly a month and a half. So let's take that month, uh, a month and a half. If let's say you were to do this month after month, or rather month and a half after month and a half, and you do did that for the full year, you know, that 1% a year turns into roughly 11 to 12% for the year. And that gives you a sense for how much income you can collect from this type of strategy. You know, even high dividend paying stocks will maybe pay five, six, 7%. We'll look at Verizon, which pays 8%. And that's what we consider a high dividend paying stock. And here you have a stock that pays zero dividends. That's a growth stock that you're looking for that capital appreciation from. Yet you can add an additional roughly 10 to 11% on top of that in terms of income. That's the income levels that I'm referring to that most investors are not, are, are not aware of that you can generate on these growth stocks that you own. And Disney, to be perfectly honest, is on the lower end of the spectrum. If you look at some of the uh, more volatile tech names like Alphabet, Meta, these are other names that don't pay very much in dividends or pay zero dividends that you can generate upwards of 15 to 20% annualized yield on these growth stocks that you own 
to, to really augment the downside risk that you're taking with these underlying stocks. Remember, you don't have any downside risk when you're selling cover calls. You are only giving away some upside above a certain point, which is why it's important that we pick strike prices that have a low delta, a low probability of the stock being above the strike price at expiration. So Disney growth stock that pays zero dividends, you're adding an approximately 10 to 11% yearly in income on a stock that pays nothing um, in income today. Let's move on to the next one. Let's look at Nike. Nike is another consumer stock, widely held. Um, this stock pays a little bit of dividends. I think it pays a little over 1% in dividends. So it's the type of stock that you get a marginal income from, but I certainly would not prioritize the income part in the, in the ownership of this particular stock. So let's again pull up the 45 days at the expiration, and we're going to look for a roughly 15 deltas, which comes in roughly about the 120 strike price. So let's remember, Delta uh, Nike is currently trading at 109, just a little under 110. If we choose the 120 strike price, that's a strike price that's roughly $10 above the current price of the stock. So the stock has to rally 10%, or, or sorry, $10 over the next 45 days. So $10 on $110 stock is roughly about 9% that the stock has to rally over the next month and a half before the stock gets called away. And how much premium are we collecting on the 120 strike? We're collecting 53 cents. This is not a high uh, income level, but let's say 53 cents on a $110 stock is about half a percent in income. Remember, this is a stock that pays you 1% a full year, a little over 1% for the full year. But here you're earning half a percent in just 45 days. So take 40, uh, 45, um, uh, you know, half a percent or nearly 50 basis points. You're, learn you're earning probably in this particular case about a 6% yield from the cover call alone on a stock like Nike, which is again on the lower end of the spectrum. But keep into mind the relation of the dividend yield a little over one percent versus the six percent that you'll own on the cover call you're talking about an income that's still roughly four times what you're collecting on the dividend yield so that gives you a sense for just how much income that you might be missing out on by not adding cover calls to your investments uh, even in ones that are not particularly attractive from a cover call perspective like nike where you're only getting five six percent um, but you know, when I say only five six percent, that's still four times what you're getting from the dividend itself. And as you can see, what we're able to do as we get a, a little bit more familiar with this process is how quickly we can get through this. Let me get uh, let me use Verizon first. Verizon pays an eight percent dividend yield. Let's take a look at how much yield you can get from the options now. So Verizon's currently trading at around thirty two dollars. Looking at roughly the 15 deltas, I'm going to choose the 36 strike price. Uh, that's the closest one to the 15 deltas. This is going to earn, in this particular case, 20 cents worth of income in the next 45 days. So 20 cents worth of income on a $32 stock is roughly uh, you know, 62 basis points, so 0.6% dividend yield. Now, if you think about that, that basically, you know, if you annual, annualize that out, comes out to be roughly seven, a little, a little over seven percent dividend yield. So even in a stock like Verizon Communications, where you predominantly own it for the dividend, right? You're not really owning Verizon for the upside appreciation. You're owning it for the dividend. You can generate an additional, nearly double dividend, the, the dividend yield by selling cover calls. So you turn a, an 8% dividend yield to roughly a 16% dividend yield by adding cover calls. So if you're a dividend uh, focused investor and you have stocks like Verizon, AT&T, uh, energy stocks that pay a high dividend, looking at cover calls that are fairly conservative and keep in mind, you know, the chances of Verizon rallying to the above $36 in the next 45 days is only about 19% chance of that happening. You know, and we know Verizon is not a is not a stock that makes huge moves to the upside. You know, your 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 risk to the upside is relatively low in exchange for now effectively doubling your dividend yield. So, hopefully this quickly gives you a sense for 
you know, whether you're looking at growth stocks, whether you're looking at dividend stocks, whether you're looking at ETFs, how much income you can generate from a cover call and what, how much income you might be missing out on with these holdings that you hold in your portfolio, because you really should think about these um, holdings in your portfolio as assets, right? Um, think about, a, you know, a, a, a perhaps real estate that you hold. If you hold real estate as an asset, what would you do? You want to extract income from it, right? You would want to rent it out and try to extract income. You have to think of the stocks in your account as as assets, and you can extract income from those assets by strategies like cover calls. If you look at the stocks themselves, the 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 stocks that you own, Disney, um, Nike, looking at um, Verizon. Most of these cases, you're looking at anywhere from four to five times the dividend yield that you're earning uh, on a on a non dividend paying stock like um, Disney. You'll likely find somewhere in the ten to fifteen percent annualized yield minimum with these types of of opportunities. And like I said, with the more volatile stocks, we sometimes see upwards of twenty twenty five percent dividend uh, in, um, uh, cover call yield on these types of strategies. So hopefully this gives you a very quick preview of how you can use stock charts to set up a quick chart list of the stocks that you own 100 shares of, how you can quickly run through the new experience that, that we've built um, within stock charts that can allow you to quickly screen for these opportunities, um, understand how much yield that you have, and potentially enter these trades into your broker's platform and um, you know start generating this yield for your portfolio. This has been phenomenal, Tony. I, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm blown away and I'm, I'm just so grateful that we have these tools. And, uh, you know, we've worked hard with you guys uh, to make these things really fly. So, you know, it's been a great start to this partnership already. Uh, for everyone watching, we have some amazing options play integrations that are going to be coming out uh, in the future. We're sort of only getting this partnership with options play going. Uh, but again, our mission is really to kind of break down options for a lot of traders, a lot of investors out there, especially folks who are kind of new to the markets, new to managing their own portfolio. Options can feel intimidating. But as you're seeing in a presentation like this, they don't have to be. So our mission here at Stock Charts, in partnership with Options Play is to really start breaking down options, making them more accessible, making them easier and uh, and giving you access to to strategies like this. So we're going to be bringing out more and more tools that help you take advantage of things like this. Uh, and again, all in partnership with uh, with Tony and his team at Options Play. So in the short term, what we're doing is again, this little mini series helping you get up and running with some of these new options tools that we have available now on stock chart. So this is our first episode. I'm so glad that I got a chance to sit down with Tony and talk through the, uh, the covered call strategy. We've got another episode coming out very soon. Our own David Keller is going to sit down with Jessica from options play and, uh, and go over some other trading strategies using options that you can put on for your own portfolio. So very exciting things happening here on Stock Charts TV and of course on the Stock Charts platform as well. Tony, again, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a thrill to sit down with you. Uh, viewers, thank you so much for watching. Keep an eye out for that next episode and keep an eye out for more exciting things coming to Stock Charts and Stock Charts TV all around making options more accessible and easier to trade for you. Again, my name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at Stock Charts. It's been great to be with you. We'll see you soon for the next one. Until then, chart on, my friends.